Ladies and gentlemen, we appear to have some technical issues connecting with Mathieu. But hold on because we're going to soon be live. No problem. I'll stream alone. No problem. If Mathieu can't make it, we can reprogram. <laughs> Oh my god, we're diving through the in the matrix. Like Mathieu is, is in the matrix right now, trying to disconnect, come back to Earth. And yep. Alright. Let me just stream like that. Hello everyone. <laughs> we appear to have some technical difficulties. How is everybody doing? Maybe we'll stream alone, contrary to what the title says, because Mathieu is um, going through a tough technical time. We had a test run yesterday, it was doing so well. But okay, I think he's there. So hold on. I think I, think I can invite the Mathieu. Um, okay. Um, mm -hmm. hold on, hold on. I'll be there. No worries. Um, no worries. So how is everybody doing? Tell me while I'm trying to connect. Okay, so this. Um, all right, so oh, because his name is all right. I'm gonna give you the the wait screen. We can't make it. Um, hold on. Yep. We're, we're making it. So, hello, Felicia. Hello, Jasmine. Hello, Cody. Um, hello, um, Emo, Balsam, Luis, Rob. Oh, you're so nice for waiting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you for your patience. Stuff happens. Okay. I've got a wild match. I caught someone. I caught something. Something's happening. Hello, match. Hello. Hello, hello. Just a second. <laughs> I I caught something. No way is cold. No way is cold. Well, you guess. Minus 12. Ooh, that's cold. How do you live in Norway in the winter? Isn't that like winter is like no sun sun time at all? Crazy. All right. I've got some Mathieu. Mathieu, are you all like ready? Because like right now they can't hear you. But are you there? I, I can hear you. I summon thee. Chat, please all summon Mathieu. And he's going to magically appear. Hello. Mathieu is here, ladies and gentlemen. 
Okay, just... Hey everyone, what's up? Hello, Mathieu. Okay, so I just need to resize this screen and we're good to go. All right, so is this the fancy camera? Is this what took you so long? <laughs> yeah, man. Yesterday we flew on, we were doing the, the settings and everything and I had a webcam here. Uh, the problem is that the webcam had a really bad quality, right? <laughs> so Florent went like, don't you have something better? And I'm like, uh, oh yeah, my fiance has a has a camera. So I set it up, but man. <laughs> it looks cool. All right, cool. So yeah. like this camera that you have right now, it's kind of, um, kind of pixely, but I think it will, um, if you switch, let, let me see the switch. Does it work? What if do you, you mean? Switch this like if you switch to your main cam, how does it look? Just to know oh, yeah, if, yeah, if it's the, all pixel yeah, that's the webcam. or if it's just so, this secondary cam. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the webcam. That's why it's pixely. Just a second. Uh, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Set up. Yeah, right. Just a second. I'm trying to look through, see if it's working. All right. So, well, I'm gonna welcome everyone. So, uh, while Macho is dealing with um, his webcams, uh, I'm gonna do a little, um, a little tour, introducing you to the man, the legend, who is Mathieu Nozier. Um, and this is him. Like, this is his Instagram man. Wow, you have a lot of followers. You have a lot of bragging rights on, on Instagram, right? Uh, but yeah, it blew up with a few reels. We went quite viral this last uh, last few months. So it's all about reels now, is it? Yeah, uh, it took me... Uh, at the first, I was a little bugged by this because, you know, I, I paint images, so it's easier for me to do images. But the reels are really the thing now, so I had to switch and basically mm -hmm. i'm doing like 80 percent reels now and just a few photos from time to time oh yeah 80 percent yeah well yeah i assume like your last po photo like actual post was pretty old so for everybody yeah, who doesn't yeah, I've, know macho been... macho does this kind of stuff but it's actually a reel though so this kind of stuff like um let's what well, let's your most famous one though mm -hmm. this one the yeah, court today, of the dragon yeah, it is uh-huh yeah, it was for the album cover for Trivium, um, their 10th album. So yeah, that was quite a challenge. It was, it's pretty big, like 60 inches by 60. So yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. massive. It took me some time. But they, they really loved it. And it, I, like, I first discovered you with this one. Like you look at this, the, the band, the metal band Trivium. So they used this painting as the cover album. Now I didn't know Mathieu at first and I discovered him um, because of the album, because I, I listen to metal, I listen to Trivium every once in a while. It's not my top 10 bands that I listen to, but I know about them. And I, I saw that and I knew, like, just, like, you know, you know names. So I had, like, I have heard of Mathieu Nozier. So I figured, hey, French name, sounds cool. And then I realized it was you who made this. And I was like, wait, hold on. So I had to um, get in touch with you. So how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, just we settled in the States four months ago, became permanent residents. So it's like a brand new adventure starting for us. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, motivated like like never. And uh, yeah, we're going to give a, give our best here. So it's it's been uh, interesting to shift from France to the United States, especially for painting. I moved here because, you know, fine art is, uh, is very alive. Here compared to mm -hmm. Europe so yeah exciting exciting times that's pretty cool so just to um, give people a little like kind of overview of your work like you were well known for like these like small size pictures but like that's not what you focus on most right now yeah so <laughs> what happened is that um, I was painting big works but like very big like two meters two meters 50 for like a long time and it was a period where i wasn't very settled and i was just moving from opportunity to opportunity meaning that i would leave six months somewhere then a year in another place here i was in morocco and then um, 
going back and forth and I was you know rolling the canvases all the time buying these big plastic tubes in hardware stores and it was just a pain in the ass to move these <laughs> oh, yeah. all over so at some point I was like okay I'm gonna paint small but like really small like pocket sized uh, paintings and until I settled somewhere so for a few years I've just kept doing small works and moving around having them in my suitcase which was very convenient and now that I'm settled in the States, in a new studio... Yeah, everything is bigger like, in the States, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything is big. And people like it big here. So I, I was like, okay, I gotta... Now that I'm settled, I, I need to increase my formats. And um, the upcoming work is pretty big. So I'm back, I'm back on large formats. But for a long time, yeah, people knew me for these very little, little paintings. So, oh, you have a question here. Has Mathieu ever painted any Magic the Gathering cards? Yo, so this is, you know, I was I was uh, with a friend in France back then and he, and he tells me like, man, you should really paint for Magic. And I was like, oh yeah, it makes sense. And actually, it would a make friend sense. who's an artist. Looking at this, it would definitely, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I had a friend who, uh, well, I have a friend because he's still a friend who works for Magic, mm -hmm. and she introduced my portfolio to to people there, and they said they love the work and they'll keep me for upcoming projects. So hopefully, at some point, yeah. So that's that's kind of your old style because I first knew about you with this sort of monochromatic style. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I first got, saw your name before I saw the Trivium album. So, like your. You're done with this like phase, like the monochromatic. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know you, but for me, it's hard to settle in something for, for yeah. For too tell long. me about it. Yeah, and then like a few months or a year after, I will pr uh, sometimes want to go back to what I was doing before. So it's it's shifting so the more i grow in my career the more i have these pockets of these, these these pockets of different styles like monochromes more like fantastic works more like no, not fantastic like a fantasy sorry mm -hmm. works um then more like classical like with you know like greek uh, sculptures whatever and i just navigate between the between those uh depending on you know my goals uh, my moods and everything so a few days ago, I was thinking of doing monochromes again uh, because I, I felt like it has a nice unity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's funny that you're 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 talking about this because I've literally thought about this a few days ago. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's it's just like a phase; it's a cycle. So you go back to some like I know I have like a certain areas of interest that I go back to, like so. I get bored with, you know, painting birds and then I do something else and then I go back to like some themes or some types of color approaches and but I kind of rotate around some some sort of a similar ideas that I can go back to. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, when you're an artist, you're in my in my case, you're basically exploring uh different things because you want to learn more you want to understand better who you are where you're going what you're seeking for and everything so um so sometimes you discover something that is part of you and at the same time this thing contains other stuff that are not part of you and the goal is to keep what you know is to you and leave the rest but sometimes you just feel like moving on and you throw everything and then later on like few like some time later you're like wait a minute this thing that i threw mm -hmm. actually had something yeah that is me so you're going back to this style to pick this little thing and bring it back to where you're now so it's in my in my case it's always a play between what i did before what I'm doing now, what I want to do after, yeah, I get and you. I keep going. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I totally. Traveling get you. in time somehow, you know, past, future, now, mm -hmm. and then making your cooking. <laughs> cool. So, can can you just like mm. explain a little bit like your journey towards becoming an artist? I I guess you started 
pretty young, but did you immediately knew that you wanted to do that as a career or did you take, how do you, how did you get into from, you know, just drawing at school to becoming a, a professional artist and moving to, moving to the United States and taking over there? Yeah. So once again, it's, it's like a puzzle of many things. Um, I started as a comic book artist. Uh, when I was a kid, I was drawing comics all the time. Uh, I lived in the States when I was uh, when I was 11 and I discovered Snoopy and <laughs> I was copying <laughs> Snoopy characters, making my own stories. And that's when I decided to become an artist. I yeah, was, I also uh, used to copy comic book characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was like so fun because I was so attracted by telling stories before uh, being attracted to, you know, drawing or technique or whatever. So. This really hooked me for many years. Like, I didn't, I didn't like painting at all before uh, I discovered it um, during my student years. Mm -hmm. So I was going to the museum. My grandma was painting, so I was seeing paintings, you know. But I wasn't. I've never told myself like, okay, let's let's try. And then, when I was in a comic book school, I got more and more interested into technique. Um, and the more I was digging toward technique, the more I was doing. So you went into toward... art school, though. What what school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, comic book art school in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, the more I was seeking for technique, the more I was get I was getting toward um, classical art. So what is classical art? Is basically oil painting, all these kind of things. Um, and at some point. Oil painting just appeared like something, like the next step. Um, I opened a book of Valentin Serov, the Ilya Repin student, so mm -hmm. Russian, Russian artist, when I was in second year of comic book school. And I remember my head clicked. I felt like, like a shift. And I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. And since I've been only doing oil painting. Um, and It's then funny, after, like, so I, I switch. It, it's almost like you don't see the comic book influence anymore in in your painting. Maybe, except in the composition, you have some very ori original compositions and angles and stuff. Yeah, the thing is, um, I have comic books. I'll show you some comic books someday if you want. They're very different, for sure. It's like another me. Uh, but I try to bring this comic approach into painting in the way, as you said, like illustration, um, narration, telling stories, sometimes mm -hmm. going very imaginary, like what, you, like what you're seeing now with the dragons. Mm -hmm. um, so probably that comic books brought me a sense of, mm, of narration, composition, illustration somehow. And then I have my other passion for purely classical art. So rendering with, you know, Mm -hmm. a 19th century kind of classical traditional approach uh, so it's a, it's a kind of mix yeah it's a cool very cool mix um, mm -hmm. and yeah so I, we had a, a, actually a question already oh sorry um, it's all like there's a red dot on all of these guys you can't buy them first of all like oh mm. look at this it's all red dotted so don't don't think about <laughs> the it. one on the left just, just drool on <laughs> oh the one on the left yeah <laughs> is it updated? Yeah. Uh, this one is really, really big. Actually, it's like almost two meter fifty. So it's to sell. It's you need space, uh, like a okay. lot of space. So one yeah. question we had in chat is: Does Mathieu do studies before he paints the big paintings? Yeah. Uh, in the past, like this big horse you're seeing on the left, this one was blank canvas, and I just took the brush and I started. This one um, here, Goliath. Yeah. Uh, no, no, the one bit under. Oh, sorry. Uh, boy on um, horse. Yeah, so this one hopefully went well, but I can tell you, usually when you start like this out from the, the blue, like I'm taking a brush, I'm going to paint, usually <laughs> it becomes a chaos. <laughs> so at some point, I was like, okay, I'm working a lot from imagination um, and I combine references from here and mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So my brain needs to process uh, how to assemble all these things. So now I do a lot of studies before um, because this is from a photo found, I, I took in India, sorry. Mm -hmm. I found this guy on the, on the beach there 
took a photo of him and I just transposed everything in my mind. And as I said, here it went well, but I'm not going to put on the website all the others that went wrong, obviously. <laughs> But oh yeah. Most of the time it, it it becomes too complicated. So yeah, I do studies. Okay. Cool. All right. Um okay. So, um and um so how did you what's your story bef because I I I knew you you were first in France and how did you decide to move and how did it work? What what is the, what was the kind of opportunity that you wanted to catch? Yeah, so here again it's a patchwork like <laughs> The more I, I talk about my my art and my career, the more I understand it's like a puzzle of so many things. Um, I started my career into contemporary art. So I was doing contemporary things, meaning this patchwork of different images that looked like a kind of collage, you know, this trend in contemporary art in painting. Uh -huh. And um, And it was fun for some time, but at some point I was like, I'm not too conceptual. I like to to uh, input ideas in my work, but the work in itself is very important. In contemporary art, the concept is somehow more important than the work itself. So I felt a little, not trapped, but not at my place. So I slowly shifted towards fine art, But without knowing the Ameri that the, mar the American market exists. Uh, so I was just thinking contemporary uh, art in general and painting is what I find in contemporary art in Europe. So I was slowly shifting towards things that interest me more, meaning being more figurative, me being more narrative. And the more I was going towards this direction, the less I was selling. Like my cell were literally doing like, mm. if this is me moving, this is my cells, it would go like, The more I was doing something classical and realistic, the less it was working. And at some, but I was following my voice as an artist. I was like, I don't give a damn. I don't feel good in contemporary art. I'm gonna keep doing fine art. And at some point, I reached like rock bottom, like no money at all, mm. no sales. Uh, the gallery I was working with in Paris to, was telling me that every time someone was coming, they were like, Ah, I like it, but it's not enough contemporary, so they won't buy it. Mm. At this, at this stage, I, uh, I had to go back at my parents' place. This is to tell you how critical the situation was. And, uh, and I started to, to, to dig um, on the internet, I made myself an Instagram account, and I discovered so many fine artists that were located in the States. And I was like, damn. So painting is not only what I see in contemporary art. And I got really hyped. And um, that's where I discovered Arcadia, the gallery, right? And um, and I just sent him a, a few works. And the, uh, Steve, the, the owner, was nice enough to answer me with a long list of things that should be improved, things that were nice and blah, blah, blah. But overall, well, it was good like, because a gallery owner usually do, don't do that, especially yeah, like it's a usually, big, big game gallery. Well, in this space, at least in figuration. Arcadia is a big yeah. name, so it's, it's it's great that they just didn't ignore you, because that's what most galleries in Paris do. So just just oh yeah, ignore. Just don't respond. Don't say anything. Just oh yeah, I was pretty stoked that he he answered me this way because yeah, I was used to contemporary galleries and contemporary. You know, it's even more than fine art. They are. They're, they're more uptight than fine art and oh, yeah. all these kind of things. <clears throat> so yeah, with contemporary galleries, <laughs> yeah, expect yeah not to, to get an answer unless your work is, is really fitting for them. Anyways, so he was not interested to, 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 to work with me, but he still took time you know, to, to list everything. So I was, I was you know, happy and I knew which direction to take. And then uh, My mom tells me that a friend of hers goes to LA for a conference for a week, and she told me like, because you're te you know you're telling me all about these American artists, maybe you should just hop on the plane with her and you know just prospect. And I went like, okay, I'm gonna do this. So I went in a plane with my friend, arrived in LA, and I started really like from zero, just knocking to doors, I actually went to Arcadia 
and say, hey, I'm Matthew, remember we talked by email? He said, no, I don't remember you. <laughs> and uh, then I showed him my work um, and he said, oh, okay, I see, yeah, yeah. And I think he was pretty impressed that I came from France to Los Angeles to, to, try, to, to try my luck. And he looked at me and said, you know what? Just do me two, two small paintings for an upcoming shows. And that's where it all started from. Started selling in the States, starting um, networking there. And at some point I was just living in France and selling 100% of my work in the US. And I said, okay, it makes sense makes to be sense. there. So I played for a green card as an artist, EB1, and got it and just moved. So now you're in the big city. Oh yeah, in big city, way bigger than the city I lived in France. I was living in a very small town <laughs> in the like, countryside. True question, Mathieu, though. How do you get your fromage and your wine? So that's the thing, is that I'm a fake French. It's oh, you're a fake I French? Ne I never drink wine and I don't like cheese. So. Oh my god, <laughs> really? That's... Mathieu, come on. Yeah. La France! Yeah. <laughs> Vive la, la France! France. Oh, like, la la! <laughs> fromage baguette yeah oh my god so yeah, well I've you're you're wine. fake french well you deserve to be in america <laughs> yeah but i like i like good food too like america sometimes the food is too processed too you know sometimes well, the quality well of i've been to the u.s like... and there's just such a big gap between like the worst kind of junk food you can find and you can also find the best it's like you have all the choices it's just the easiest to pick up is definitely the junk but if you want mm -hmm. to find really good food it's like you can that's the good thing about america but however totally. i have to say like the junk food is way easier to find <laughs> and way cheaper yeah that's the thing when i was with julie uh, my fiance were in the states and i was always looking on the back of the products and she was like it was the first time in the states for her we come from the same hometown and um, she was like, why are you always looking at, at the, the composition? And I'm like, you know why? Just stare at it. And she was having like a, I gave her like a bagel and the list of ingredients was like this. And she went like, okay, I got it. So as you said, you can definitely find great food. You just need to be careful to read, to watch out and to search for it. Yeah. All right, we have a question. How do you like driving in LA? <laughs> so I don't have a car yet um, and I'm gonna have to get one soon because I like do you have to mindset. do you really well, have to I'll... like is it everything so far away that you have to get a everything car? is really far like I spend my time in uber and you know prices poof, skyrockets at the end of the month so I was like I'm just gonna get a car yeah I, I live without a car in France because you know we have public transportation yeah same but I, I don't own a car is, is, i don't uh, really like bad. my wife yeah. has a car but we have just this one car for our entire family mm -hmm. because i don't like i work from my studio i would like really one of the worst things like seeing the american lifestyle for me would be to always have to drive so you have to find a place downtown but that's i guess hard to find yeah well, like a small well, city thing, center there's... Yeah, the thing is, there's not really city center in LA. You're basically going from point A to point B, and there's nothing central on around which people rotate or navigate. All right, so Mathieu, uh, you're mm. here to work. Yeah. Because the idea of double the art is that we make art at the same time. So what are you, what do you have planned for your... Uh... Yeah, so I have a horse study um and i wanted to complete it like i did it a la prima but i wanted to add something more especially like work on some temperature shifts which are not okay in my opinion um okay i still have this obs issue i don't know why you need to go to in obs and activate your virtual camera yeah yeah that's what i'm doing otherwise i'll just switch to well you can switch manually if you want uh, just a second. Uh, just a reminder for everybody in chat, you can use the commands to change the camera. Split gives you this. Uh, guest gives you this. 
a close-up on Mathieu. You can, if you really want to zoom in, you can have guest zoom. And this is it. And okay. if you want to type exclamation point host, you'll be on my stream where I'll finish this um, uh, silver point drawing that I started in the previous stream. So I still have some work to finish it. And, uh, and if I finish it during the stream, I'll have some other drawing studies to do. But I mean, don't waste your time looking at me. Uh, you can watch Mathieu paint or just go back to this split vision because uh, it's it's looking cool. So um, how yeah, about this study? Is... What, what is this? It's like um, it's a it, horse it, study. It's a study uh... or finished yeah, this work. Is a... Looks like God, a finished work to study. me. It's it's very fresh in the application. So it's a, yeah, it's a study I did in like one pass. Uh, how to say um, yeah, La Prima. And I don't like the head of the horse. I feel that. But let me put it here. Okay, I feel that the temperature is the same from here till here, and I would like to have a shift, make it maybe warmer here on the head mm -hmm. and uh, that's what I want to work so I'm probably gonna do a little sketch of the head here to try it and then do it on the on the final piece okay. the only thing is I'm trying to find an angle where the the, the horse is not distorted because here you see <laughs> he has a giant gigantic head well it's okay or... I mean like you, you need to have an angle like I've, I've tried all the angles in the world like you know I've been on YouTube for a long time it's uh -huh. very hard to never have your face in the way. It's like a meme on my channel. It's like I'm always like oh, that, yeah. oh, no. like <laughs> right, whole, like blocking my <laughs> oh, it's shot. Not the face, it's it's the it's the horse itself because it has a distortion, so the horse looks very you know like a huge head and all this kind of thing. Well, yeah. I mean, nothing to do about it. I think it works. It looks great. So yeah, okay, I'm, okay. I'm happy that you're working on that. All right, so we have some questions in chat and we, I'm going to bombard you with questions now because that's what you signed for. Mm -hmm. um, totally. Okay. Uh, uh, so what, I saw a question earlier. What does Mathieu think is the best way to learn oil painting like his style? Uh, the best way you mean in terms of... Uh learning like self-teaching i guess oh yeah so oil painting you basically want to have a good understanding of the fundamentals meaning uh okay, just give me a second because they no, think no problem. okay yeah um you want to have a good control of that basically values uh saturation and temperature uh oil painting is not really about finding a secret on top of a mountain held by like an old monk or something <laughs> it, it's more about understanding how color works and how to apply it because if you check this work or any work in real life you'll see that when you come close to it it's pretty messy so the in oil painting when you apply the right color at the right place next to the right other color it quickly becomes realistic when people start they tend to think that i'm painting with like a magnifying glass and for hours i'm like scratching paint with a mm -hmm. very small brush but no it's just like pick the right color put it at the right place so when you want to start yeah and oil painting is the best medium for that like this mindset of just put the right color and put it very like simplify things because the uh, other mediums they they make it more difficult because of like I think, like gouache, for example, it's not as simple as that. It's like it's more tricky than a lot of people think. Yeah, because uh, the the good thing with oil painting is that it stays open for a long time, so you have time to make your mixes on the palette. So it's a great way to it's a great medium for finding exactly the right colors I was talking about. So yeah, to answer the question of of uh, your viewer, 
just focus on values only for a long time like you could paint black and white i did that you paint black and white until you understand well values and how the oil paint works and then you switch to color and when you switch to color uh yeah read some color theory books uh, especially the books from digital artists they explain very well all right so um I'm curious about Matt's contemporary work. Is this still visible somewhere? Like your <laughs> old contemporary style? Yeah, I think so. Uh, let me sh let me search on my computer. Actually, this could be fun. Just a second, and I'll share my screen. Because they were so different, man. Like crazy different. Um. Okay, yeah, I have lots of them. Should I share the screen or uh, you guys want to well, see? If you want, yeah, from your screen. Okay. Or you send yeah, me a link, try. what you prefer. Uh, let me see if I can send you a link, but I don't know if it, these are still online because it's really, really old. <laughs> you covered your traces. <laughs> yeah, I just think the the websites that were back then were that are probably not anymore. Right? So you had a complete shift, right? Oh yeah, like crazy shift. Comics also, it's it's all different. Like the fun thing is when I was at school and I was. Um, at my final exam and I had to display all the, the things I did mm -hmm. um, the teachers wouldn't believe I'm this it's the, from the same person oh, yeah. and, uh, one day yeah once uh, a teacher uh, told me that uh, I, I ch I'm cheating I'm giving my work to do to someone else mm -hmm. because the styles were so, so different, different yeah like, really different yeah yeah and it was so frustrating because I was like, no, I just tried another style, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's too old. I think it's really too old to find anything. Oh no, <laughs> yeah, I have some. Okay, I'm sending you a link on Discord. Okay. We, wh what is this website? I don't even know why I'm there. <laughs> So here are some contemporary works, yeah. All right, hold on. Arta Vita. All right. So Machinus, yeah. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Definitely. So the, the picture is okay, yeah. Portfolio. This is from another galaxy a long time ago, right? So no one judges. That's me funny. You've me. been doing that for a while, though. Like I totally respect that. You've been at work. Yeah, it was working very well. Like in terms of oh. selling and and uh, uh, I'd say like uh, success. I was yeah. having residencies, articles, and yeah, it looks very contemporary. I thing. see. I see exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, really style. Done with I'm just checking. Okay, yeah, let's bring seeing it. Wow, that's such a shift, man. I didn't yeah. knew I didn't knew this fast. Well, it's still cool. I still see what types of galleries are interested in that, and there's definitely a market for that. But it's still there's still some very some high skills still in what you call contemporary. Like it's years away from what like most people would think is contemporary yeah i was still trying to you know input some some technique into it but uh you see it's the, a this lot dark more vibe? technical than most contemporary i can tell you that Matthew. oh yeah probably <laughs> oh yeah but uh yeah the vibe was a little dark also because <clears throat> i was i don't know why when you're younger you're attracted to things that are a little darker uh probably because you find it an easy way to bring a reaction to the viewer and then when you grow up you become more subtle 
So I this work was one. also a little too dark in my current taste, you know. Okay. Cool. So the history behind the man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I didn't know that, man. It's so it's wild. And then comics. And then yeah. So a lot. Have you have you changed your style so a lot during uh, your career? No, not that much. First of all, my career it started like kind of late in my life. So I first started. I, I studied philosophy. I started as a teacher, and then I I switched back to, and I had the idea to become a, a professional artist when I was like twenty five something. So all these years where I guess you were making the contemporary style and I was like doing something completely unrelated. Oh, I see. But uh, it, I, this is an interesting topic. Uh, wow, why I, I lost my ears here. You lost your ears. You can't hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? No, no, no. Oh, uh, just a second. Uh, speak? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. No, I, I accidentally op opened a, um, a YouTube window and I had the volume maximum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, what I was saying is... Um, what, what were we saying? Yeah. Sometimes you do things that are totally unrelated. For instance, I myself uh, spent a lot of time doing music at some point and skateboarding, and I was not <laughs> painting and or not uh, pa I was not even to painting there, but then but drawing comics anymore. And I felt I feel sometimes guilty, like if I would have known that I'm going to paint professionally, I would have started and stick to it from day one. Yeah, well, you know, but that's, that's life. End, that's life stories. There's no going back. Yes. Yeah, every to everyone I speak, it's always the same thing. They 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 all had things that drag them away from what they're doing now, because it's a journey. You simply didn't know you do this now. Yeah, so I guess. And what you did before, anyways, is gonna be helpful. So yeah, that's what I say often. Very often, people tell me about like, oh, I've been a nurse for years and now I want to change. But I like it's good. Like keep it. I'm I'm super glad that I didn't go to art school and that I that I studied philosophy instead because the philosophy is super useful in what I do. Like in my scene, in my subjects, the the types of imagery that I explore is completely integrated with the philosophy that I studied. And if I went just straight from high school to art school i wouldn't have this same you know the same open-mindedness i don't know how to explain yeah that's the thing um art is not just about technique people usually think like oh my god if i would have started painting at three years old from morning to evening i would be great but no you actually paint but you wouldn't necessarily be an artist so there are many things that constitutes skills. It's not just technique. It's also your creativity, your um, vision, your uh, freshness, um, so many parameters. And one of the skills is content, right? Mm -hmm. And content is going to come through what you're experiencing in your life. If you're tied to an easel since you're a baby and you do nothing else, your content is going to be very poor and this skill is going to lack. And when you're into fine art, realism and so on, skill is a very important aspect of your work. So artists tend to forget that there are many other parameters that needs to be on point. Otherwise, you'll just end up painting very beautifully a vase, but mm -hmm. then that's it. Right. So. So yeah, there's a big debate on this channel is should you be more subject driven or brushwork driven? Like is what matters most the way the painting looks or what it says? That's an ongoing debate, so you don't have to give me a, a precise response. I'm yeah, in the I subject side, but 
you're welcome to be on the other side. We have people from both sides here. Let me know in the chat, what side are you on? The side of the subject matters most or the side of um, brushwork matters most, like appearance. Tough question. Yeah, in my opinion, you need both because it's like language. It's like if you're asking someone, are you more into saying nice sentences or say something that makes sense? It's, well, obviously, if you speak well and you say something that makes sense, then it's great. So, so the question could be more like if you had to choose which to enhance, which one would it be? And indeed, this is a very tough question because if you're saying something interesting, but you're talking like blah blah blah, blah then uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Articulating so the cool either. articulating both sides is like actually the the key to mastery, I guess, of of both yeah. actually because. If you're clear about your subjects and what you want, the story you want to tell, it's going to make the, the facture like easier and better. And, and if you're clear about like your skills, your brushwork, it's going to make storytelling easier on the, like it goes in both directions. Uh, Mathieu, mm -hmm. can you just reframe because what you're painting on is like- Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I was, okay. was, I was about to do. Because we don't see what you're touching all right <laughs> painting air yeah right here so i'm gonna so, do a small question from the then. discord who was your biggest inspiration so it depends on which style that's the thing um if we turn if we talk purely about fine art like what we're into now i would say delacroix the french painter mm -hmm. nice it's a name you don't hear and often like in this yeah Delacroix he touched me in a strange way like I'm touched by his energy by his life I read a lot about him mm -hmm. and by all the um, by all the how to say that the, um, his early compositions mm -hmm. I'm not too much into his late work but his early work for me is really striking but the more I understand painting the more I see that he's not insane technically speaking but i'm really into his um his energy yeah, yeah the energy uh, it's funny I, I i was thinking you were gonna say jerome jean leon jerome maybe because oh, so you, you've been focusing on the orientalism for a while maybe that's that's it yeah jerome is the opposite like i'm really into his technique which is insane but I feel that his subject, it's a little too sweet. Okay. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong, like he's, yeah, yeah. he's a master. But I'm more dragged towards the, the, the crazy energy of Delacroix. He's a yeah, little, I'm a little showing more, uh, Delacroix for everybody who is not really, um, doesn't know about Delacroix. I'm just showing some Delacroix pictures here. Yeah, like if you check the Sardana Pal from Delacroix, this is one of my fav work. Uh, okay, I'm going to try to see if it's there. This one. So this is actually, I think it's just a study, but just the study is almost as good as the main work. Mm -hmm. Kind of insane. I don't know if you can see on your screen. Like, like if you look at this, like it's just a study. It's amazing how detailed and all this is. It's really cool when you see it in person as well. I know for everybody has the chance to visit the Louvre. Holy shit! We have a huge. lot of Delacroix. It's like insane and when you get closer you see some some great brushwork i've always loved this one orphan girl at the cemetery it's just it's me mm -hmm. you have a very sweet like brushwork crazy never been able to do that this kind of stuff i'm way too tight Yeah, what I'm working on him is that he stays fresh. Okay, so back to this one. All right, next question: Which have more beauty, the muted cutters or the vibrant cutters? Huh? 
What, what did he say? Which have more beauty, the muted colors or the vibrant colors? Oh, I think it depends on your taste. Like, if you're into, I don't know, Zorn or something, then it's, it looks great. If you're more into Soroya, then it's it's great also. I don't really have an answer on this. It depends on your taste. I would say it's, it's mostly in the, the, what makes the beauty is how you balance both and each artwork needs both. It's like, we're so into making everything relative tonight, much of it. Um, but really it's just, I, I find that it's about that. It's like the muted colors kind of help the vivid color stand out. But if you have mm -hmm. only super vivid colors, super high saturation, it kind of looks very boring in the end. Kind of looks like really like a child toys. It's way, way too strong in like hue and color. So, yeah. No yeah, easy that's response. The thing. Um, painting is so much about balance. It's, I mean, the world of colors in general is about balance. All right, I'm going back to chat, seeing if we have some questions. Right, in chat we have people that subject it's kind of half and half like you know mostly subject driven or brushwork driven both can choose one without the other mm -hmm. um, right. 50 50 i guess is the correct response <laughs> yeah yeah Somebody says, I want Snoopy what? art in crayons. What's that? Uh, somebody says, I want Snoopy art in crayons. Maybe because you referenced Snoopy as one of your oh, yeah. <laughs> early inspirations <laughs> as a kid. Yeah, I like Tintin also. I still watch these guys. Um, my inspiration is very broad. I don't know about you, but um, you know, it's not only about old painting. So can you talk more about your brushwork? What's your approach to brushwork? So as you see, I'm very angular because I like to draw. So flat? You're using flat right now? Is that what you're using? Yeah, it's a flat brush. Uh -huh. That's that's already it's, like it, kind of a bold choice. Can you yeah, talk exactly. about it? Yeah, exactly. I like... Sorry? Yeah, just explain like why you chose this type of flat. Yeah, because you're gonna have a flat stroke, which is gonna be great for construction. And I'm obsessed with understanding and constructing well what I'm doing. Um, I would spend hours uh, just drawing like a, le a horse leg to understand exactly how it works. Um, not necessarily that it's gonna help me later. It's more like one of my passion in life is understanding how things work. So. Um, a flat brush is perfect for me because you're going squarey and going squarey it's like you need to understand how things are constructed otherwise it's just gonna be a mess so it's easier for uh, you know depicting plans and everything which is why I use yeah, this brush What is that blank dahlia? Childhood re refrigerator art. <laughs> refrigerator art? What's that? I don't know. Like the art that you you know you give to your mom, so proud, say, "Mom, look at this," and she's like, "Oh, okay." Oh, like you're gonna the, put it on the refrigerator, okay. and then when you're done, <laughs> I'm sorry, but sometimes my kid, I'm all about like helping him be creative and all but sometimes like when the drawing is is just like you know a couple of you know sometimes they just take a paper because they are bored and draw whatever mm -hmm. 
and they give it to you like hey look at this I'm I'm, I'm super hard sometimes <laughs> I say no you didn't apply yourself I don't want it <laughs> yeah, I'm super harsh but I don't know I'm an artist I'm I'm gonna have high standards for my kids <laughs> drawing I'm, I'm so harsh but hey <laughs> and do your kids do you, do you give them advice or something or just let them no I don't like I don't give him want. advice other than just apply yourself don't just give me like sometimes he's just bored and he has like the markers and the paper and just does like some type of scribble and i'm like no you know how to draw a character better than that so do something better because <laughs> i'm not gonna hang that on the fridge if it's not done well <laughs> early standards for the kids yeah just yeah well <laughs> no i'm not super harsh like that but you know i want him to to apply himself just mostly it's mostly about school though i, I mostly want to, him to be mm -hmm. just concentrated and focused at school so i i kind of treat drawing as work like it's like a mm -hmm. professional professional deformation i guess so i'm kind of oh, a bit yeah i bet they're they're um, their comrades at school are really impressed by their drawings because when I was helping my little brother, then he would always get great marks in drawing. Um, in France, we have art plastique, which is a section at school where you have to draw or to create stuff. And the teacher was always like, you cheated. And he was like, no, no, no. And he didn't cheat. I just gave him advice and he would just apply them. So it's funny. It's because they've lost the, the idea of skills like so much that it seems unnatural now just <laughs> just work on actual drawing instead of just expressing yourself they say to kids yeah just uh, express yourself do what you want well what if they first want to know a couple of things before they can express themselves what do you give them if they want to do that well nothing they can just express themselves yeah that's a big problem in in Europe especially is that the teacher they like no offense to them but they don't know much so it's yeah I mean they don't know much yeah even, they don't know much yeah no uh, they haven't in fine like, arts, most so it's of hard to the, get the information yeah they don't really have the, the technical skills themselves otherwise they would do something else I guess yeah people in the chat were there from basically like if you if you have a in chat, like it's mostly US, some people from the Netherlands, uh, some people from uh, from Australia, sometimes from some people from New Zealand, kind of all over the place. We have some people from Denmark, Greece. So where do they find their uh, their their information for learning how to paint? Schools, people, books, internet. Like, I'd be curious. Well, okay, so chat, where did you find how to learn how to paint or just make art in general? So school, how was your art education in like your art, uh, high school or primary school or junior high school art education? How was it? All right, we have some questions next, but this one you can just... Give me a quick response. What's your thoughts on painters like Van Gogh? Van Gogh. I love it. Uh, it's really cool. Like it's, I like his styles. As, as I said, I have many different styles in the, what I show is oil painting, <coughs> you see now. But I explored so many styles that um, I like various things. And I think Van Gogh is, uh, yeah, he's sick. Like it's really, really, it's really, really good very personal like if you think of him who else in you know when when a painter discovers a style usually he has followers people yeah. who follow and copy the style who copied van gogh after he died basically no one it's like it's very personal well, they tried it, it was so fake that nobody could just make it live you know yeah exactly you can paint like van gogh only if you're van gogh so yeah I like it's it crazy it's like such a crazy destiny like how it, it, he only painted for a couple of years i don't think it was more than mm -hmm. i don't know how many years he painted for but not much but uh yeah yeah give me a second i'm just gonna 
Yeah, sure. Close the window because it makes a reflection on, no uh, problem. on the horse. That's my, my studio is all black. That's <laughs> that's my way of uh, doing you, that. You paint in the dark uh, with uh, artificial lights also. Yeah, I I shut like right now it's nighttime, but I'm mo even during the daytime I have like some curtains. I have uh, I'm blocking the blocking the natural light as much as I yes. can. Mostly because of the video, I'm not gonna lie. It's because I, wait, if you make a video and the color balance is all messed up and then you have to speed it up, it's mm -hmm. a nightmare. So what's your thought? Next question after Vengo, what's your, th what do you think of Jackson Pollock? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because that, when I was in a contemporary art school, I had my final exam on this guy and I don't hate it personally, but I'm not interested at all to speak about these guys. So when I arrived at the exam, I didn't study anything. I was like, I'm not going to study Jackson Pollock because I don't care. And uh, I arrived at the exam and I told the examiner, I said, look, I'm going to be honest. I didn't study Jackson Pollock because I am not into his uh, approach. But I am a huge fan of Delacroix and I can talk to you about <laughs> everything. In you did his that? Life. Well, yeah, that's yeah. a bold move. So I don't care about yeah. the guy you assigned me to. <laughs> and I was like, we're in an art school, so basically we're interested in arts. We're not a, we're not in an artist school or a Jackson Pollock school, right? So I'm like, anyway, if I know about an artist, that's the most important. And I was really passionate about Delacroix and I knew everything, I read everything about him, his journal, everything. So I was like really ready to to talk about him. And the teacher just looked at me and said, no, the <laughs> exam is on Jackson Pollock. So nice try. He, yeah, he put, <laughs> he put me zero and I had to repass the test in September <laughs> to study this Jackson Pollock thing. And I have nothing against Jackson Pollock, but since then... <laughs> Even well, it's still work. a bad experience, but well, you didn't care enough about him, so he didn't inspire you enough to even just talk, even for a good grade. If you don't know in chat, zero is like, yeah, it's the worst you can get in France. There's nothing below zero. It's like it goes from <laughs> zero to 20. And yeah, zero is bad. Because yeah. Jackson Pollock, work, I mean, his work is nice. Like, I understand why it has success, but it has zero place in my life. So I was like, why should I study this? It's like, if you ask me to study, I don't know. How, it's just, uh... I've, you know, I, I know about history of art, you know, and like what's said about Jackson Pollock is always the same. So I don't think there is any point in really in like, it's action painting and the movement of the painter is part of the, of the, the work and the, like the uh, there is this kind of display of him recording himself doing it and you have like also the randomness of where the paint falls and and he's putting his canvas on the floor yada, yada. and once you said that it's like okay all right nice and he was the first one to do something like that cool all right next like i don't i think yeah, he but... explored like abstract ex expressionism just he did almost everything you can do in this kind of field and like before it becomes boring yeah the thing is i had the same problem with a drawing teacher at school i was into painting and i was cutting drawing class to, to stay in the studio painting because i was into painting and mm -hmm. the guy has put me two on 20 at the end of the of the scholar year even though i was locked up all the time inside the school i would even lock myself up at night i would oh hide my god the studio, so the, oh my the, god the <laughs> what tell me yeah, about that the guardian That's would just a crazy you know, story round around to see if everything is empty then shut the light leave and then i would open again the light of, of the studio what? And just paint till like 3 a.m yeah yeah <laughs> that's crazy Oh yeah, God. so I was really, really, too, really determined, you know, to learn and everything. And this drawing wow. teacher couldn't see that. Like, because I was cutting his drawing class because I wanted to paint, he put me two, which has put me in a very complicated situation because it, mean that, it meant that I needed to have a huge 
great in painting in terms to pa in terms um, to pass in order to pass sorry and it's just like Jackson Pollock. I wasn't understanding why this art teacher. Well, you were kind of an yeah, outcast for, for me, in this art school, though. Sorry. You were kind of the an out, outcast in this art school because, like, compared to what you wanted to do and what they were willing to teach, you were clearly like thinking differently. I guess. Yeah, but the thing is, you see, if I am a teacher. If the student has passion, like real passion for his work, I don't care if he's going to my class or not, you know, it's okay, I'll give him, uh, I would rather give marks on passion rather than if he's going to my class or not. If I'm a art history teacher and the guy never shows at my class, but at the end of the year, he painted like a hundred thousand works and he gets locked up at school at night because he still wants to paint. Why on earth would I give him zero because he cannot talk about Jackson Pollock? So I was very rebellious. Yeah, disappointed. I was like, fuck, these guys, they're just, uh, you know, they're basically teachers, but they're not more than that. You see what I mean? Oh, Black Dahlia in chat. Mathieu sounds like me. I used to lock myself in the bathroom in school to draw. <laughs> They just let me stay in there too, eventually. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, he, he gets what I, what I say. How much art history do you think influences your own work compared to your technical skills? Like, how much, oh, huge, ha like huge. the history knowledge compared to technical? I think usually, like, it's, it's like if you, if you enjoy a particular band and then you try to dig into the style of this band I don't know, rock hip-hop rap you know electro whatever mm -hmm. and then by learning more about this domain you discover other musicians so it's the same for me art history allowed me to discover many painters that i, I haven't heard of before so it helped me immensely that's that's again related to passion if you're passionate about something it's logical that you're gonna dig uh, it's like if he, I never saw someone saying I love drawing and he just never looked at other artists. It's yeah, that's why I would I suggest know. to every aspiring artist start making the art first, just randomly, and then as you do art, you as you'll start making more art, you'll think, Hey, what other artists have done what I'm trying to do but better so that I can just go look out for inspiration. And you'll have a much, a much better approach to history of art rather than just, just opening a book and reading it from cover to cover, because that's not how you will actually have an experience that will impact your own work. Other, but if you just start making the art and then look for masters of the, the past who did something similar or just were like the precursors in a certain field. That's how you actually um, learn and have an impact. Exactly. Have you ever encountered people like it happened to me a few times and I was very well, like I didn't really understand. Some people you said like, who are your references that they will answer you like, I have no reference. I, um, I don't think I ever enc encountered people like that yet. And I've been talking about inspiration and reference and like who's your favorite artist or you know i don't know for me in contemporary I, art mostly oh Sorry. yeah because you've been working in this field and they have like zero reference points yeah people were saying like i don't look at anyone i just do my work oh, that, that's not surprising okay. that's not surprising because each artist thinks that they can reinvent everything from scratch that they don't owe anybody anything, that there is no such thing as, you know, legacy and just that tradition is basically fascism. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how they, some of them think in a way. Yeah. Ah, okay. Next question. Has French heritage affected your painting life at all? So you, you told me you're a fake French who doesn't drink wine and, and cheese. 
but has your French cultural kind of heritage? Do you think, feel connected to that in your own painting career or just how you approach art? So, yeah, to be honest, I don't really feel related to any country in the sense that uh, I traveled quite a lot. I uh, lived uh, for years abroad, like I left home at 18. So I, I, I wouldn't say I don't like France. I would just say I love the other countries as much as I do love France. So in terms of heritage, I'm not hardcore into France in the way that I would, um, you know, dig only French art, French techniques, French subjects. Mm -hmm. This being said, uh, being French obviously influenced me immensely in terms of mindset, in terms of um, taste. Uh, it's, it's funny because in Russia, I've I spent some time in Russia uh, studying uh, the masters there, and I, I talked to a, um, a Russian artist there, and she told me that in St. Petersburg, for instance, they also, when, when a teacher is rating your work, he will also rate the taste. It's not only technique, it's not only colors, it's not only drawing, there's also taste. And for sure being being French helped me with the taste in terms in, in the way that you know you have access to so many amazing museums that you can really yeah build up your uh, how to say your your um, work on your ref I don't know how to say this. This sounds a little pretentious to say this, but it's not what I mean. <laughs> what I mean is that being French helped me um, develop a certain sensitivity. Let's say, okay, let's put it this yeah, way. Yeah, don't worry. You're you're allowed to be pre a pretentious French boy here. Like this is this is. <laughs> no, the... I don't want to sound like <laughs> this at all. But uh, yeah, obviously, if I have a friend from India, he will have a work that has a certain flavor. If I have a friend in. Uh, Um, Russia, he was have another flavor, and because I am French, I have a certain flavor. So yeah, but I, I, mean. I still see. Well, technically, like maybe you don't realize, but I I see the French influence in your work, like the Delacroix, the painters like that. And I I kind of um, well, you could say that of other painters though. If you were from a different country, maybe I would just orient myself. Maybe this kind of a prejudice because I know you're French. I don't know, like for me, I, I didn't think it either that I was sort of connected to my cultural heritage, but then I sort of realized that, well, we are so lucky to be in a country that has such a an old culture. Like you can see some very old buildings, like cathedrals, stuff like that, with some actual very old work. And it's crazy to think that these guys were working at the same stuff that you are doing, like 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 many centuries ago and they were doing exactly the same thing and you're kind of following the path i like to be a part of this you know this kind of um not just about being french but being a, like part of a community of artists who have been like using timeless techniques to more or less do the same with a different vision for centuries I, I kind of like this idea. Yeah, totally. I don't know if you felt this before, but when you walk like in Paris, sometimes you sit in a garden or something and I'm like, oh, imagine like Delacroix, Jérôme or whoever sitting at the same place and watching at the same building or the same sky. Yeah. So that's that's the cool thing with, with France is that the history is so big that sometimes you, just, you can just leave your mind, you know, traveling and imagining as you said who was here before what they did and that you're basically the following chronology of, of of these guys and and there's also like the cultural appeal we still have that i'm i mean mostly from the 19th century and from the modern era with you know picassos and stuff we still have this appeal even though picasso wasn't french but he worked in france and you know paris when it was the big art center that it was and we still have this kind of 
great cultural image for us even though i i doubt that it's still very very much alive right now but we still have this heritage of how france is a culture of is a country with lots of art you know they have this art this idea of the you know the french artists like na -na -na -na, working on a canvas <laughs> like you know with a mustache and then painting this masterpiece yeah, yeah, yeah. what you don't like my masterpiece but this is <laughs> this is horrendous kind of we we still yeah. have this kind of cliche and i like to use this cliche because i want to make the you know the french ideal of creating art and making fun and cool art i want to keep it alive so I don't mind the cliche. I, if if it helps people jump into it, I don't mind. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, sad part is that in France, fine art is kind of in a. Is in it's a kind of dead. Right now. It's kind of clinically dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brain dead. Yeah, hopefully in the states it's still on. So. But well, actually, will, yeah. Well, for also... example, the the states, the big revival has been done by american artists using the technical of the french in 19th century like of french schools and stuff this is why they call their mm -hmm. stuff atelier all this kind of reusing this but yeah it didn't come from france yeah exactly it's funny we were the center of the world for painting back then but now i have to emigrate yeah. to the united states man <laughs> <laughs> cultural migration yeah, yeah, it really is. All right. Oh, this painting you, how, is going how... along so well, and oh, the little horse. Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, well, you're... yeah. It's just about blocking the right colors, like I said earlier, and then even with a fat stroke, that the structure is is here, you know. And then Chat. using temperature shift. Chat, as do you, you really think the... I'm gonna move my cameras myself? Just do your job. You have the commands. Sorry, I'm just talking to chat. Hmm. <laughs> All right, no worries. Go ahead. Yeah, I was saying the more I paint, the more I understand that um, transitions and uh, uh, contrast is important. Like if you have a warm color or a warm zone, you want to contrast it and transit towards something different because otherwise you work becomes a little repetitive in terms of zone and that's what I'm trying with this little horse head to make it warmer and then I'll do it on the final horse but oil painting isn't easy like I had a lot of moments when I was very frustrated did it happen to you to be so frustrated that you actually want to quit? Oh, you mean every day? No, in general, like uh, if you had a period where you were so pissed on painting, they were like, "Well, you're pretty anymore. much describing my regular painting day." So, <laughs> really? <Okay. laughs> no, I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit, but you know. The right. typical part with art is that it's so linked with who you are, like art is your life basically and you are the art, that when art goes wrong your life is fucked up oh, yeah. the way wrong. It's, Definitely. it's very interwined. Definitely. Um... So what do you say to all the young artists who dream to make painting their sole job? Is it realistic or should it be a side job? Well, the aim is always to do what you love all the time. So the aim should be to be a day like a full time job. Now it's, it's going to take some time or not it can also go really fast it depends so in my opinion if you 
work hard, you're dedicated, you're curious, you're passionate, everything. Why not? But it depends on your mindset. If you're really determined, then like I was, for instance, then fine. If you're more into, you know, having a steady life and you don't like to have big ups and big downs, especially financially, oh, yeah. um, maybe I would say keep it as a hobby, then you'll feel better. It, it, in the end, it all comes down to feeling good in your life and feeling okay with your everyday life. So it really depends on who you are and what are your expectations in life, not in art. And then you'll, you'll line up your decisions based on this. What's your favorite color pigment, pigment wise? <laughs> your favorite paint Probably too? the earth tones, yeah. Oh yeah, I also love the earth tones. So simple, yeah, but yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, I can say the one I hate the most though, I hate phthalo blue. Ah, okay, I kind of like phthalo blue. I mostly really? use I green, but... Strong. Yeah, but I I love to use a cyan, and I can use it to create a cyan. Oh, I see. like most of my color revolves around cyan in the blue range, mm -hmm. and it's very hard to do that. Well, my main color is cobalt teal, but it's oh, getting yeah, super expensive. One. So right now I'm relying on phthalo to kind of create a, a fake cyan. Mm -hmm. But I, I agree that as a blue, it's not it's not useful. I use ultramarine for my blue. Mm -hmm. What's your what's your palette? Just palette is pretty simple. Um, it's basically white, like warm white, uh, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow, mm -hmm. uh, cadmium orange, red, cadmium red, alizarin. Transparent Oxid Red, uh, Viridian, Cobalt, Ultramarine, and some Greys, yeah. Oh, huh, cool. So yeah, pretty simple. What about yours? Um, <clears throat> I mostly use um, uh, Yellow Ochre Transparent Red Oxide. Mm -hmm. It's sort of my main skin tones hues. Then uh, instead of um, instead of alizarin, I use quinacridone rose. Okay. Uh, Pyrrole red instead of cadmium red, mm -hmm. because it's less expensive and it's it dries a little bit quicker. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then burnt amber, ultramarine blue, cobalt teal. If I have you know the the money to buy it, because right now it's getting super expensive. Or phthalo and, and some phthalos that I use um, to create cutters in this range. I don't have that. Phthalo green mostly. Yeah, the transparent oxid red, this color is so crazy. It's so necessary. Like, I couldn't paint yeah. without it anymore. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. And it's crazy to think that it's still on cave painting, it's exactly the same pigment. It's still Already? holding on. Well, yeah, That's it's cool. an iron oxide that they used, like the cutter red that they had back then, it's the same. It's crazy to think that. Mm -hmm. What is the pigment you hate the most? Uh, the pigment I hate the most, hold on, is... Um, I would say Henza Yellow, something like that. <laughs> Oh yeah, I never tried it, but you I know a very it's, it's like a weak yellow. It looks like it's going to work like a cadmium, but it's not. So in the end it does nothing. I I don't normally use cadmium yellow except for very high, you know, accents of color. Mm -hmm. But this uh Henza yellow, I don't know. There are many colors I've never tried. Sometimes I see a color and I'm like, it looks nice, but I, you, you can just make this color. Or so. All 
right, so we have other questions. Andrew wouldn't like this, he likes Enza yellow. All right, maybe I didn't use it well. I don't know, I'm not a fan of cadmium yellow in the first place, and I find that Enza yellow is kind of the poor man's cadmium yellow. I don't know, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, you just, I just bought some Henza yellow. You're saying I wasted money. I'm not going to make friends today with the Henza yellow. Oh my god, I'm going to make enemies. Um, I've never tried it, so I don't, I don't, I can't even I don't know. say if it... I was just saying that, like, I don't necessarily hate a pigment, really. Except maybe um, a, a, pig, a pigment that I know is going to outperform or just damage my painting, like, you know. Uh, zinc white to make an underpainting for example like this is the kind of stuff that I would hate but I don't know other than that okay uh, what's the most beautiful place in the world for you tough question because for me? there are many beautiful places but what's the most oh, beautiful depends. in your opinion or maybe we can just make it so the best you've been to in terms of food, I think Thailand. Well, we're talking about yeah. beauty here, not... Oh, beauty. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> talking food. It's because it's lunchtime for me. I didn't eat. Uh, My okay. brain is influenced. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can take a break. No problem. Uh, no, it's fine. Go um, beauty. Like, I guess, landscape Europe, or just Europe architecture? Europe is pretty big on the list. Hmm? Sorry? I said Europe is pretty big on the list. Asia also. I lived in China. Uh, I studied there and worked there in the past. Oh, really? Wow. It, it yeah, sounds yeah, like I you did for... so much, man. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> yeah, I turned 35 uh, in September. Oh, my God. September. Oh, yeah. Big change. 35. I don't know. How old are you again? You? 37. Yeah, yeah, 35. I felt like it's a, it's a kind of, it's like when I had 25. I was like, whoa, 25. So I don't know why each five years it's it's a it's a big move, but uh, yeah. No, you have to stop counting. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're healthy and performant, you know, on the on your in front of the easel, it's fine. What I, what some what scares me sometimes is to to become old and. You know, some artists, I don't know why, when they grow older, their work tends to be weaker, and this scares me a lot. Like, I'm, I'm paranoid about this. And some other artists, when they grow older, their work becomes stronger, so... Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, I knew the vampire vibe was real. What, what vampire vibe? What about your best place for beauty? I don't know, yeah, probably the French Alps, something like that. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm from. <laughs> oh, even more reasons then. <laughs> yeah, the Alps are really nice. All right, what's the worst advice artist here like in general worst advice worst yeah worst advice uh do things like this i guess uh, every time my teacher said like do things like this then it turns to be a nightmare because a teacher should the best teachers i had were the one who gave me passion and gave me so much love for art that it fueled me for many years and you know mm -hmm. to keep yeah. seeking keep, keep working but teacher who comes to your painting and say put more red do it this way yeah follow so my style basically yeah yeah exactly and mm -hmm. then every time i did that it took me 10 years to like un unmake what they, oh, what they told me so yeah, unlearn yeah 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 every time someone says do it this way i'm like whoa <laughs> hmm. danger hmm. Yeah, it's tricky because when you know something, you know a certain way and you, you don't necessarily think about um, 
about how it's actually a very restrictive vision that you have yourself as an artist. And exactly. not Don't everybody's get me wrong, going to I'm benefit from it. Sorry? Like, probably just it worked for you, but it doesn't mean that everybody's going to benefit from the same things that worked for you. Yeah, exactly. What I mean is not about necessarily technique. If, if your values are off and the teacher comes and says your values are off, then it's totally okay. What I mean is that when your inner voice as an artist, if the teacher comes and say like, you know, I don't like your subject or I don't like the fact that you're too narrative or whatever, this is totally linked to an individual. So this for me shouldn't be discussed. Uh, but of course, if you're playing a wrong note or you're singing out of pitch, the teacher can say it. That's that's absolutely fine. There is no problem with that. Yeah, Black Dahlia saying that teacher in the, of chat, mine. the worst Sorry? advice, like confirming your point, the worst advice is to tell someone who's trying to learn is to box them in, say the right way is this. That's kind of your idea. Yeah, exactly. I had a teacher who was telling me like, be more masculine in your paint application, you know, be more, um, uh, I, I don't remember the term exactly, but uh, um, more virile, that was the term. Have a more virile brushwork. And you see, this is very personal. Like if I want to paint very soft and feminine, like Jerome, for instance, softening each of my touch, then this is totally up to me. It's like if I would come to someone and say, uh, I don't know, have your hair more like this. This is, it's none of your business. Yeah. So this is what I mean when, when yeah, totally. When an advice can become dangerous. I know. And I think a lot of um, what people like about, I don't want to send me flowers, but a lot of people like my approach to, you know, teaching art online because i'm never like putting everybody in a box i'm giving all the different options saying all right you can paint tight you can paint loose and i'm gonna just explain the difference between the two and why you might want to go loose at some point and tight at some other point you can be, do both at the same time or you can decide to go straight for being super tight or super loose so I'm never saying you should do that. And this is the, the way to do it. This is the best way to make art. There's no best way. Like it's just, you just give the technical skills and then let people decide what they do with them. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, we shouldn't forget that the final goal is to make a good painting, whether it's a uh in this approach, this approach, or whatever, yeah. the painting has to be Definitely. good, and, you know. Definitely. Uh, yeah, no, Mathieu and I are both not, we can't hear Jeff. It's Jeff is only for you in chat. Like Jeff is this meme that we have on this channel because at some point oh, yeah. there was this fly in my studio always like landing right on my canvas in the middle really? of my canvas and they somehow adopted it in the chat. They named it Jeff the fly, like Jeff Goldblum in the, you know, the movie The Fly, you know, catch the oh, reference. Yeah. I don't know if you catch the reference or not, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they adopted the fly and they didn't want me to to get rid of it but like <laughs> of course it died and now they're just crying every day so i created There's... a meme like they can activate a jeff sound effect and have a, a little oh. fly pop on screen <laughs> but we can't hear it it's not like the yeah, other sound jeff, effects you have jeff's spirit no in your studio he's still there somewhere exactly Jeff lives on. All right, uh, what do we have then? What do we have? Um, 
So, favorite food? Not complicated. Curry. Thai curry. Ah. Nice. I don't know enough about this type of food to, you know, judge what would make a good one. Because I never had, like, you know, a really good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really into Asian food. Like, really, 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 really into it. So, obviously, a uh, Thai curry number one. Second, ramen. Third, um... Third, uh, probably... Pho. Always soups. I like things that are, you know, creamy and this kind of mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I'm sorry for making you hungry i know it's lunch time for you <laughs> no, it's fine <laughs> i might actually get asian food afterward you know i i i heard there was some twitch streamers they get like instead of giving them donations they ha have them you know they send them some food somehow i don't know what the system is but they maybe we can do that yeah my fiance had this she streams and sometimes people who send her like real boxes full of food. Yeah, it's, I don't know why, but so, yeah. Tell me about uh, about your girlfriend because um, what yeah, what is she? Her name is Nogisan, so she's from my hometown, Grenoble. That's where we met, and um, she's half uh, Vietnamese, half Spanish, but born in France. And she's very influenced by uh, Japanese art. So she does lots of things um, from comics, illustrations, um, merch also. And it's really cool because we're basically from a different field. Like I'm into classical arts, she's into more pop, into, more into pop culture and everything. But uh, we inspire each other and we get along very well. Like, Do you have a link of where, where, where she streams? Can I put it in the chat for people if they're interested? Oh yeah, Nogi-san. N-O-G-E-S-A-N. I never know in English if, if, if J is G or J. Nogi-san. It's, I guess she's on Instagram. Is Nogi dot oh, yeah, on yeah, Instagram? Yeah. Sorry, is is that her on Instagram? Nogi dot San. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, okay. that's her. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna put the Instagram. Check her out. Thank you, thank you for sharing her her IG. And yeah, um, her her. The domain in which she, she works helps me to stay fresh and the domain in which I work helps her to, you know, s uh, stay on the like the roots, the roots of art. So it's a cool combo. Yeah, well, your your uh, camera is laggy, so I'm going to take this opportunity to switch actually oh, yeah, okay. to her. I don't know if you can refresh maybe your... Um... Uh, let me see, because on mine it's still okay, but let me let me. Okay, maybe it's, I need to refresh, but I, this is Nogi-san's art for everybody, so more like anime style. Mm -hmm. Oh, ink drawing versus oil painting. Yeah, that's a show we did uh, with two painting, nice. two, two uh, work in common. Nice, I like, like the collab. Mm-hmm. Very cool. All right, let me see this camera. How is this? Better? Okay, I think it's better now. So I'm going to okay, switch again. Do you paint with gloves or without gloves? Uh, normally, I verily, uh, uh, during the winter, I don't heat up my studio that much. So sometimes I have like mitten gloves, like you know, with the, I have, I don't, I don't have them here, but I have mitten gloves. Oh, really? Okay. 
but yeah, normally I don't, except when I'm just, you know, cleaning, doing something messy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, with gloves, I always drop my brushes. We oh, have the latex gloves. I, yeah, I, I, I would kind of hate the, you know, the, the feeling of having the latex. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Man, no for for hours, I would, I would sort of hate it. Which uh, which diluent do you use? Gamsol or just regular turfs? Uh, no, I use um, well, yeah, Gamsol pretty much. Sensodor I use most of the time. Okay. <laughs> but I don't. My approach makes it so that I very rarely. Or no, I never get in contact with the paint, so I don't like I don't need to wear the gloves for safety. It's just because I'm cold. Okay, okay. And because I most of the time I use a emol stick like that. So uh, mm, every time I'm yeah. I'm always like far away. And I'm I'm using long handles. Do you use short handles or long? Actually, I don't use a mole stick. I use this. No, but like long handle brushes or small handle brushes. Oh, long, long, long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't like small. It's I feel too much like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I would I would advise every oil painter to just get mostly long handles. Mm -hmm. Soroya yeah, was using such a long handle. I don't know if you saw the photos. The, the what? He's literally like two meters away from the canvas because he sticked. Uh, Sorola? He taped sticks. Yeah, yeah, Sorola. Okay. Oh, yeah, the broomstick. I think I talked about the broomstick um, kind of trick uh, in a video. Something that I do, you know, I, I do it sometimes for fun, but I rarely think about like. Putting my brush on the broom stick. Mm -hmm. Even though I have one of these, you know, paint rollers, extenders, like you use to paint your ceiling. And actually, oh, yeah. uh, there's a hole, and uh, it's kind of easy to put a, a brush in the hole and paint with that. So sometimes I use it, but I rarely just think and have the idea to make that. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how far you draw or paint from the the image, but for me, because I have a comic book background, I always tend to be too close to the work. And when you're mm. painting, uh, it's good to be a little bit away from it. But yeah, yeah sometimes I have a hard time, you know, just well, generally. Distance. Well, right now I'm working on a drawing and it's kind of tiny, but yeah, generally I I step back, you know, and I've. My background is I've I've learned I've taught myself to draw and paint with the sight size, so I'm always doing this. Mm. So I had to actually oh, yeah. my entire setup had to be optimized because I'm always like that, moving around so much. Even my mic, everything has to be optimized for this way of working. Mm -hmm, with. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for a small drawing like that, I it's I can relax and just not move. <laughs> it's nice. Which is why I find it so relaxing, even though it's hell of slow. <laughs> All right, so what do we have? Oh. the command not working oh
yeah sorry the commands should be working now i'm talking to chat there is a it somehow it disconnects sometimes oh okay Okay. All right, now it works. Okay, cool. So we had another question, which is, um, how do you deal with creative blocks? Or periods of low inspiration. Whoa, yeah, Guess that's you. a big one. Sorry? Hey, Matt, that's the bot. That's Steven for you. <laughs> it's it's just oh, okay, a, a bot. See, see <laughs> You'll hear when the camera switches, it's a bot. Yeah. We can even make so him talk. Our... Don't, don't make Steven talk because it's going to be annoying everybody. <laughs> so art block... Um... I never really had an art blog, but I had a lot of episodes of uh, doubt, mm -hmm. like really high doubt, which ends up blocking you. So it's, I could say it's maybe a different source, but it's the same result. So when I doubt and I don't know what should I do, where should I go, and then I became become stuck, I usually try to watch references to mm, yeah, reboot me tip. and motivate me. Yeah. And I also try to see things that are linked to my roots, seeing my family, seeing my close friends, and somehow going back to the roots in terms of environment um, helps me settle my mind and see clearer because usually when i doubt my mind is agitated my mm -hmm. mind is um you know going everywhere so seeing things or being in a place that is linked with my roots help me calm my ma my, ma my mental my mind and then in the same place i would watch references or just you know listen to interviews and some or something and then usually the inspiration goes yeah, back okay i see and the dot vanishes, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah, one is more about the, you know, mental yeah, quietness, and the, the other one is more the artistic side, like refueling the, the flame of just, mm -hmm. just artistically, yeah, exactly. and the other one is just, just relaxing in your head and just getting your priorities straight. Have you yeah. ever had art blocks you, yourself? Oh yeah, definitely. Or how what I have you, most is handle? never, I'm never blocked to just start a new project. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I get discouraged along the way because I, it doesn't turn out good enough or I, I don't, I feel disappointed or I overthink, you know, the, the, the financial value before it's even done. I'm like, no, I'm never going to sell that. What am I doing? I'm wasting my time. Even though if I didn't have this kind of way of thinking, maybe I would have pushed it and it would have sold, I don't know. But like I'm overthinking, like selling it before it's even done. And that's the tricky part. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, we're, t we're talking about this yesterday. Yeah. The fact that when you're painting and you're showing your work in the gallery, I mean, even though you're, even if you're not showing in the gallery, everything that is outside of commissions, you're basically painting without knowing if it's, if this is going to be sold and it can become very, uh, stressful because you're like, am I wasting my time? Am I this and that? And yeah. not easy. Yeah, well, you really need to be a super high level artist to just be able to do whatever and like, you know, that everybody's going to follow you. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know, well, reaching this stage, 
And I, I don't even know if once you get there, you're still satisfied with what you do. I, I doubt it. Well, I don't think so. It's different kind of pressure. Once you're there, you're also probably having some kind of imposter syndrome like we all have. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think inside all the artists are probably the same, but uh, yeah. yeah, when you're very successful, um, it shows less, let's say. Black Dahlia says, for art block, doing something automatic like washing the dishes or doing laundry can help me when I'm suffering from artist block. Looking at art books, other artworks, switching mediums, going back to the basics help me. Sometimes yeah, you know, totally. you know, you can. Sometimes you get your best ideas doing something very mundane, just being in the shower, and you have like this burst of, oh well, I should do that. It's so cool. You have to get out like all wet to go in your sketchbook and put this idea down. Or you just, yeah, yeah washing showers. the dishes, doing anything. Showers work well for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I like I like to think about work in the shower. I've never been like, I don't know, like walking in the woods or something that never really inspired me that much. I don't know. Never. I don't know if I did it wrong do you have Already? like inspiration from going on walks because i've heard about people yeah, yeah, yeah. having inspiration like that never had really happened to me so oh yeah yeah a lot a lot i like to walk okay. uh usually when i walk especially when i walk alone i really it's like resetting it it's, it's mm. like restarting my inner processor <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. yeah well, I second, I'm, I'm sure it works because I've heard a lot of people say it works. It's just, I never really find yet the good idea from walking. Just, but I'm yeah, sure it and works. And just a second, I'm going to plug because the battery is going low on the on the iPad where I have my ref. Okay, just a no second. Problem. Okay, often when I don't have an idea for what I do, I spread out my supplies, then I feel hardly the will to go in and my moment mood drives me. Challenge motivates me. When I get artist block, I give myself challenge something new, bigger. It works for me. Depends on your type of personality. Also works for me. I always challenge myself to make a new painting, but the tough part is finishing it and putting it to completion. That's that's where I get artist block once I'm halfway there or like 80% there most of the time, which is very frustrating. And yeah. <clears throat> I don't know how good is your cable management, but mine is a disaster. I'm searching for the right cable. Oh my God, look at this. I'm gonna show you my cable management. <laughs> This is a, a topic for me, big, big one. I have a, a, because I work with this cotton here. That's basically my, uh, my setup. I have my easel here, my computer with all my stuff. Mm -hmm. And behind, because this is supposed to be a moving part. So I have this big bag with all the cables. And look at this, all these cables. But it's pretty neat. Yeah, because this entire thing has to be moving. So if I don't have good oh. cable management, I'm, I'm screwed. Because like every time when I have a bigger canvas, I have to move this on the side. Uh, most of the time I have my still box um, reference here. So yeah, cable management, I really had to work on it. It wasn't, um, wasn't a waste of time for me. Right, so you don't want to see mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a disaster oh man but i i got some of the, like these they sell like cable management kits with you know all sorts of tiny hooks and scratch things things that you can plug yeah. stick to a wall or you know these big things that wrap all the all the cables into one but yeah Florent fancy look at that yes I am fancy like that. Well, it's kind of necessary though. Like I can't have non, 
managed um, cables. And I well, think I'm gonna I'm gonna unplug the computer to be able to plug. You see, that's where that's where we <laughs> we stand. <laughs> okay. No problem. <laughs> well, you, no, okay. no problem for you. You can disconnect. I, ha I still have my camera. So, all right. See you in a couple of minutes then. Oh, no, no. The, um, I just unplugged the, the battery, so I'm still here. Nothing, okay. Nothing moves or shifts. I, I thought you were forced to, you know, disconnect for a moment. <laughs> it's not that, that uh, as bad. <laughs> okay. But yeah, in our modern era, it's not about it's not anymore just an easel and some pigments. It's like cables, computers, cameras, mics. Can you hear me? Yes. Because my the camera froze for some reason. Um. Yeah. Well, it's the static image. Are you on your seat right now? Because we can't see. Yeah. Just a second. Okay. Well, I think just OBS bug. That's it. When I unplug the computer, OBS just went. Uh, let me re re restart the. Okay, I'm gonna be back just a second. Cause... No problem. Take your time. So, chat, you remember what I was talking about earlier with how the silver point kind of changes color? You can almost see it here. Like all this side that I did last time is kind of already turning brown. And all this new part, see how it's much cooler? That's what I was talking about the oxidation. So it's already happening, it's already visible. Um, it's very cool. It, it gets this nice, I don't know, warm tone later on. It's much cooler when you just scratch with the silver point. And this is the type of thing, again, I'm gonna play my the camera can pick it up card again, but this is really the case. In this. I guess you can barely see the difference, but I definitely can. Especially in the reflection, in how it reflects the light. It's a big difference. So yeah, the oxidation is kind of kind of kind of fast. Because I did that, when was it? Mm, two days ago? Yeah, and it's already starting. Is that on canvas? No, it's a it's a panel, it's a dye bond panel. And I'm not going to paint, it's not the plan. The plan is to give it pure silver point. Or the joy of making silver point. The joy of using the most kind of primordial art technique 
you can imagine just because I can this is kind of like it's mostly for the cultural heritage because there is technically almost no point in using silver point to make any drawing except the love of drawing and the love of how you know it it's it's a nice legacy of you know the era when they didn't have graphite and but i don't know i've always been very impressed by this da vinci silver point drawing uh so yeah always been very cool Mathieu, j'adore la vague en noir et blanc qu'il y a sur ton site. Je sais pas si Mathieu est toujours là. Mathieu Ouais, ouais, je suis là, je suis là. Et bah, quelqu'un dit qu'il adore. Jasmine là. dit qu'elle adore la... la vague en noir et blanc qu'il y a sur ton site. C'est vendu ça C'est quoi C'est vendu la vague en noir et blanc Oui, oui, elle est vendue, ouais. Ah, bah, bah, est merci bon. à Jasmine, euh, c'est très sympa. <rire> Après, ouais, tu, ouais, tu fais euh, des prints Do you make prints of your work or do you only sell originals? Yes, sometimes I did a print release but uh, now the, the, the print is sold out so I stopped. Uh, but I'll do more in the in the upcoming month. I want to do like a sign job uh, for some upcoming paintings. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna be back soon. Well, you're still there in our hearts. In <laughs> I'm like the fly, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I should make a command to make Mathieu pop up on screen. The fake French command. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Cynthia. It's clean and doesn't smear, so that's the, one of the great points if you want to use that as a... Yeah, it's one of the benefits, but there is a lot, incon a lot of inconvenience, like the fact that you can't erase. But yeah, it's definitely... That's, that's a very... Like, that's a great quality. Look at that. I can press as much as I want. Yeah. And try to smear it, smudge it as hard as I can. It's not gonna move. That's the ideal kind of drawing satisfaction is doing this. Look at that. I can I would lick it, it would move. Just straight up from the pencil to like finished and never moving. You don't need fixative, you don't need anything. Yeah, and it's it's the most time traveling kind of drawing that you can imagine because like the silver here is not going anywhere um so yeah well drawing in general is good the only problem with drawing conservation is the paper if you don't work on paper look at that if you really want to have like a drawing that will stay as it is forever like this is a an aluminum panel i i guess the plastic is going to um is going to um turn bad at some point but so you can do copper let's say copper a, a copper panel or some very archival plate and you gesso it with something very very archival gesso then silver pointed and that's kind of as as archival as a bronze sculpture, I guess. Whereas a drawing is something very fragile, and the drawings that we have today, they can't even be exhibited because they are just so fragile. Even the light would break them. But with that, I mean, they're good to go. As long as you don't draw on any type of paper. Or any type of surface, but it's one of the benefits, though. Oh, 
Okay, cables are plugged. Let's see. Wait, that's so metal. Yes, it is. And we're going to talk about metal. Whenever Mathieu is ready, we we have to talk about metal because Mathieu is is big <laughs> in the metal scene. So we're going to talk about that definitely. Well, it doesn't show except the the trivium painting on your channel, but you wouldn't know that it's from like the 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 cover album. But it doesn't doesn't tell you that it's kind of your uh, like to me it kind of became your your niche like your own personal niche but we're going to talk about that when you're yeah some, when some you're yeah. uh yeah sorry about so this. are you still having technical yeah, difficulties right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah obs crashed for some reason so um any refuses to to end that it's okay you can just put your camera straight into discord oh yeah true I guess it will be easier. You won't have the side face cam, but it's no, no problem. Mm -hmm. Wash your hands first. Well, my hands are clean. You think there's going to be destructive oils in there? Even there, I don't think it would affect the gesso that much. It's a gessoed panel. That's pretty much um, not going to go anywhere. Okay, I think I'm back on track. Hey, good to have you back. Hello. <laughs> yeah. You're still glitching on my screen, so. Oh, really? No, oh, you're, you're back. Just move right now. Okay, yeah, you're back. Okay, good. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, yeah tell me crazy. about your... Uh, your links to the metal scene and how did you get to make the cover art for uh, Trivium and how did you get into metal like making pictures for bands and tell us about it yeah so the thing is I wasn't listening to metal before Trivium contacted me I have a background in rock music but uh, never really much into metal and so Matefi, the um, lead singer, frontman, you know, and guitarist of Trillium, uh, contacts me, sends me a DM on Instagram and says, Hey man, like, we love your work and uh, would you be, you know, would you be happy to, to do our next cover album? And I was like, whoa that's that's crazy but uh, i didn't listen to any metal so i didn't know who trivium was and i went on on wikipedia and i was like wow these guys are big yeah they are so i was really honored and i said yeah totally and so the only what thing did they find metal... from you that made them think uh well let's ask this guy what what other works did they look before contacting you Oh, in my work, uh, yeah. they, they they fell on the gray paint, the gray, black, and white paintings mm -hmm. that we were talking about earlier. The gallery I was working with back then, Haven in New York, they she was a big fan of Trivium and metal in general, and she just ah, okay. DM'd the, the the band like in a like a like a shot in the dark, and it actually worked. They loved the work, and they thought of me for their album cover. And yeah, usually metal is a little dark, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, a little scary, uh, imagery and everything. It's not scary, the term, but uh, yeah, just dark. I think dark is the best way to describe it. 
and I'm not really into this kind of aesthetics so I proposed something very luminous like the dragon and I felt that it could be really cool to have a contrast you know to stand out by not using the the usual codes of metal and it actually worked very well they they did um, the in the court of the dragon clip is actually based on this aesthetic it's very mm -hmm. lightful and it works super well like it, it en ended up being very metal even though the colors are so bright yeah and this yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this because it stayed in my universe. It wasn't too much away from what I do usually, so yeah. Plus the band bin's really cool. They left me total freedom, so yeah. It was great. So are there any specific tools or materials that you couldn't live without? Like outside of your, you know, your paintbrush, your palette and canvas, what is like the special, like secret, you know, tool that you have in your studio that if it's not there, you have to find a new one or you have to, you know, replace it somehow. Yeah, probably non-absorbent primer from Michael Arling. This really saved my life because I was, oh, let me show you. I was obsessed with um, having a surface that is not absorbent, but not necessarily oil-based. Mm -hmm. And I found this, which is crazily good because you can apply it on whatever surface and it basically won't sink in too much. Yeah. Like what I'm painting on here is wood and it's applied with this primer and you see the paint stays fresh nothing yeah i'm gonna leave know, a link gets, for everybody in the, in the chat yeah. so that's something that yeah i really i really dig yeah it's definitely michael harding is just so great mm -hmm. yeah yeah the key cast what about you um, I would say my mole stick because I got it, I've gotten used to it and I always like, you know, I always put it, it's like I, I use a mole stick with a hook like that and, uh, Oh, so it's okay on top of yeah. the canvas. So I, I was, and sometimes I even not put it on the canvas, but on like on my easel, I have like a little, a little, um, bar on top like where i hang my stuff and uh yeah, yeah and i awesome. have like i'm always putting it here and there i'm so i i made like four of those of different sizes so that i'm never like i always have like one that's quick to access every time mm. so i guess this would be my 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 stuff Stuff like yeah, I thought about without. doing this hook thing because it's very convenient. Well, yeah, if you're into into um, into making a mole stick, is I I find it much better than the one that you're supposed to press against the surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah.
Balsam said, I started using a can, a cane my husband found. The handle is a gun. <laughs> Very decorated, classic looking gun, but lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, like, you always have a story to, to tell to everybody who's coming to your, visit your studio then. That's good. Good to think about stuff like that. Uh, all right. Let's jump. So, how are you doing? How is it like is it talking and um, and making art at the same time? You're doing great so far, but oh, thank you, thank you, man. Yeah, uh, I used to talk on the phone with friends while painting uh, before, but lately, to be honest, I like painting without any solicitations, so I'm more focused. And I've been doing this for quite some time now, so it's funny to to be back at painting and talking at the same time. Uh, it's fun. I uh, I just feel that I lost a little the the skill. <laughs> I'm less good at this. Yeah, the multitasking. Before. You, you yeah, used yeah, to stream on on Twitch, right? For a couple couple months. Yeah, yeah, Twitch. Uh, I was thinking to do Twitch again, to be honest, because it's fun. Now that I'm not, uh, you know, across the globe, then I have my studio and everything. Yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. If then you now that stream on Twitch, like up everything. me up, we can do some something, mm -hmm. meet up sometimes, like with their yeah, new yeah. function. I can explore the new Twitch stream together function. Like that's basically totally what we're yeah, doing. That... But I guess they automate everything. They really want to make me move to Twitch because they're so much better at just streaming. But it's just like everybody's watching me from here and they don't mostly use Twitch. Not many of them. You can do multi-streaming, you said, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we, like it's now it's allowed again. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for a while. Now it's again allowed. It's just discovery on Twitch for me. It's like a nightmare. Like nobody knows that I'm there. Mm -hmm. It really takes a lot of grinding to get like significant views on Twitch. Yeah, yeah, totally. So. Something fun too would be to, you know, do like a Gartic phone or Scribble or some, uh, together. That'd be really oh yeah, funny. definitely. <laughs> fun story when i was painting this trivium painting uh, the big dragon it was taking uh -huh. me so much energy that late at night after i finished the work i would just go on scribble <laughs> to draw there and like impress 12 year old 12 years old people just because i was so full of doubt and it was complicated to paint this piece I would go and scribble, draw, and people would be like, oh my god, and I would feel motivated again, and then go to sleep, <laughs> and next day work hard. like Barbara um, talking in chat I've considered streaming on Twitch uh, I don't know what I would do on camera but I don't think I'm entertaining it doesn't have to be entertaining it's just um, it's it's like just watching is fun it's just on like Twitch it's hard to get discovered by the right crowd because like most of their art is like you you have a lot of anime you have a lot of 3d artists like mm -hmm. more traditional art like that it's like it's not very common though no. it can send, stand out you know by contrast i guess yeah well i guess you have to find your find your crowd but you have to be very patient mm -hmm. before you can get significant reach yeah, it's just like Instagram and everything. When you start from scratch, community, it's long, like really long.
Um, Mathieu and Florent, I'm so eager to discover your favorite sketchbook if you could show us. Can you show your sketchbook? Do you have a sketchbook on hand? Sketchbook like you mean the favorite material or what I drew inside? Like a sketchbook tour, a little improvised sketchbook tour. Oh, I don't have much sketchbook here. It's all in France because when I moved, I left them there. All I have is uh, this. Wait a second. I have these studies, that's actually a study I did of the horse I'm painting. So, I did it first in pencil and then I... I did it after with oil. Nice. Studying the legs, the anatomy, everything. Yeah, I saw this one. And then, uh, I oof. think it was on your Instagram. Yeah. And then some anatomy sketch or sketches also I did. Here you have one. So it's are not you really big on anatomy and all? Did you study Sorry? anatomy a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even horse anatomy? Sorry, Equine? You did you study horse anatomy as well? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh my gosh, oh. horses. A lot, Impressive. Which allows me after to block in, you know, the right way when I'm when I'm painting. Oh, nice. Then, uh, so it's not really a sketchbook. It's more like large sheets of paper that I, you know, nice. that I draw on. All these kind of things. Yeah. Oh, I like your anyway. structure. What is this big scr you. structure thing on this? Like this, this torso with lots of like lines. What is that? What is what? Sorry. There's a torso with lots of lines. I didn't get what it was. Oh, let that me you show showed. You, that you just showed. I was sure, very sure. intrigued. With lots of lines. Which one? Oh, the middle one. Oh, the lines is because it was a symmetry, you know, you have one side and the other. Oh, yeah, this one, yeah. And to have the right symmetry, I just did lines to, mm. to get, otherwise, you know, the peg would have been too small on the side and too big on the other or whatever. So you just built that out of, like, the structure. You didn't look at a model for this one. It's just uh, the structure. This one, I had a model, but uh, the structure, the, the oh, what's the question? Sorry. <laughs> like, just the torso bit. With all the lines you did by just the structure, you didn't have a model for this one. Uh, yes, I had a model of a torso, but um, the the lines were here to make it mm, symmetrical. That's the, mm -hmm. okay. The and then yeah, how it works: the shoulder blade, the uh, shoulder blade, the uh, wow. clavicle. Sorry, mm -hmm. and everything. And then the corset. Yeah. Impressive. Thank Impressive you. that you went through studying equine um, anatomy as well. That's dedication. Yeah, because horses, if you want them, yeah, horses, they're like humans for some reason. If something is off, you see it straight away. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. If I paint, I don't know, like a, like a dog or a cat, if something is a little off, it's okay. But horses, I don't know why it's like. They suddenly look too big, too small, too this, too that, so... I don't know, like, cat, the face, though, like, it's easy to make it look very weird, though. The, I've always <laughs> yeah. found that cats, yeah, like, faces are, like, it's hard. It's like, almost, you have to work as hard as a human portrait, in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. So I think I'm done with this little study of the head. Let me nice. show you what I meant when I said, like, the temperature was, was weird. 
if I'm looking back at both, mm -hmm. you see that the first one has the same temperature here and here and in the head. And I felt it's too repetitive, like this color. If you forget about the horse and you just put like color strokes, mm -hmm. this part is too much like this and this and this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wanted to try a more brownish head. Yeah, like I did it here. works much better on the face you just did, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and if you copy uh, and paste this right here, it's gonna look better because you're gonna shift from mm. like a cold, purplish thing to this brown, yeah. and it's gonna look it really looks nice. So, great. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah. So there was a temperature problem here. Then that's why I wanted to do this study to see if it works. And now that I know that it works, I can just go back on this one and put like a warm glaze and just do a few touch and this is it. Wow. Wow, perfect. Looks great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And you, you, well, you did great. You, you see that you have the, the habit of streaming and painting, talking at the same time, so it's cool. Pretty cool. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's been a long time. I told you a year and a half since I haven't streamed, but since I didn't stream. But it's good we did this stream because um, it helped me to put back everything in, in place and I can, you know, stream more from now on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just some cable management and I'll be good. <laughs> All right. Well, we can end it up on this note then if, you, if you're if you okay. Yeah, totally. All right, cool. Thanks so much for having me, Florent. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Awesome. St stay in the Discord, but we, we say goodbye to everybody in chat. And uh, I'll see you for the next one, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for following the stream. Thank you for your questions also. And yeah, looking to catch up on Instagram and everything. Yeah, follow Mathieu. All the links are in the description. So follow Mathieu. And 